Hello student. For this uh, guided video, we'll be going through the work example number two, part model A. It will be as shown here. And a little bit more complex than your work example one. Uh, it has more features and yeah, we just need to analyze it carefully. And as usual, we will remove all the secondary features, holes, fillets, all this, and then just directly look at what is the physical, what is the first main part of the whole model. Okay, for this example here, so there's two components that will be the main feature right over here. It, one will be the base here, the diameter 120, okay, this base, which is 8 mm thickness. And second will be this rectangular shape, okay, which is square 60. And it's extruded upwards by 40. So take note of this extrusion. Uh, it's not starting from the bottom here. So the sketch will start from here onwards. Okay, so with that, let's go into your Autodesk Inventor 2020. Let's create a new file, a new part file. So click on new, matrix folder and double click mm.ipt. Let's go and expand the origin folder, found the model browser, left click on YZ plane, press down the shift key and press the XY plane. This will highlight all three origin planes right mouse click and click on visibility. To begin with this diameter 120, we will click on the X, Z plane because this is the top view and create sketch. Click on circle, select the projected origin point to as our, the center of our circle, do a rough, Sketch first and apply a dimension constraint. With that, we can finish the sketch and click on extrude. Now, in this example here, the extrude, uh, there's a few ways to study the diagram. So your extrude goes downwards and the square extrusion goes upward by 40. Uh, and at the same time, you notice that there's this extension over here that gets extended all the way to this center axis. And we have a 30 degrees uh, rotated axis to create the feature here, the side boss here. So when we see this kind of example, it's always best to extrude the bottom base, the diameter 120, downwards instead, because we can retain the, the origin from the default origin from the file itself and use that to create our secondary features. All right, so let's change the direction to the opposite side and the distance will be 8 mm and enter. I'll press the OK key. Next. Let's click on one of the planes. I will be clicking on the wrong plane this time, okay? And I will show you how to re-edit it so that you get it correct. So like I mentioned beginning, uh, I will create a plane here and then I will extrude it upwards. So in the case where maybe some of you have selected the wrong planes, what to do next, okay? It's not all the time that if you have created a wrong, uh, if you have selected a wrong plane and created all the sketch, you have to re-delete everything and redo everything. Okay, it's not always that case. So I will show you what I mean here. So click on this bottom plane and go to the rightmost icon to create a new sketch. And I will create, let me zoom out slightly so that we can see clearer. So this is a square of 60 by 60. And it starts from the center of this axis here, center here. Okay, so for this example, instead of using the normal two point rectangle, we will be using, just expand it first and click on two point center rectangle. Okay, with this, we have an extra selection for the center of the rectangle. So click on this 
go to the projected origin, click once to specify the center of the square, and then click once more. With this, we can click on dimension, enter 60, and then we apply the equal constraint from here to here. Right, because they share the same dimension itself. So let me uh, allow me to zoom out so that you can clearly see everything. Now, let's click on finish sketch and we will extrude by 40. So, as I mentioned, I would like to retain these origin planes exactly to what we have here. So, the first step is I have created a sketch on the wrong plane. So, when we say about sketch, we need to find that sketch, the, the sketch that we have created wrongly. So, to do so, let's direct it to this feature, the extrusion number two, expand it to show off, to show the sketch two also. So, left click once to see a preview on the window graphics. Right mouse click this time, and we need to redefine, means we will reapply the starting position of this sketch. So click on redefine, select this surface, and if you notice here, it has slightly shortened because now the sketch is starting from here and it goes all the way down by 40. So the distance should be at 32. So to double confirm, press the M key on your keyboard to call out the measuring tool and select this edge. And yes, it is 32. We just need to change the direction to upwards. So let's press the escape key, click on the icon of extrusion tool, double click on it, and change the direction to the opposite side. Let's just preview it for a moment and just check and it's good. Press OK. So with that, we have retained the use of the default origin planes. Next, we are to create this this feature, this secondary feature, okay, about this point. Okay, there will be a pivoting point here, and it pivots the whole plane by thirty degrees. So to do so, we need to create an axis along this side. So click on work axis under the work feature panel, select this, the YZ plane, and this time on this top surface of the circular base. With that, we have safely created a axis, or well, work axis. With this work axis, we will create another work plane from this horizontal, because the dimension of 30 degrees here is from the horizontal upwards. So this will be one of your uh, reference plane and together with this axis itself will be your pivoting point. So click on plane, select the work axis and select the top of the work plane or, or the top of the, uh, the base. And here enter 30 to have it inclined by so, and press OK. Now, in this case, we might want to just click on this surface and then draw a rectangle and extrude it up. However, we would not be able to retain some of the dimensions here properly, okay? So with that, we just need to create another plane, click on this newly created work plane, and click on the work axis that we have created beforehand. And we will create a perpendicular work plane from the work plane number one. So it's 90 degrees and press OK. With that, as you can see here, we have a lot more planes than usual. So that's the reason we always try to simplify our design right at the beginning. So Never mind. Let's click on workplay number two and create a new sketch. Okay. We can press the F7 key to slice it. 
And from here, we will notice that we have the center of this rectangular feature and the hole. Okay, this is if we trace it down, this is a center line, and it goes all the way to this point, which is this point itself, as what we have created previously. Okay, but let me just show you one more time. Every time when we rotate, we cannot click anymore on this view cube. It will not be showing the true shape of it. To do so, we need to press the page up key. Okay, notice the symbol on the cursor changes. Let me repeat again. Press escape. Press the page up key on your keyboard. And the symbol will change. And then now click on the work plane number two. So we can see directly on the uh, sketch plane itself. Now, same thing. Let's apply this uh, two point right center rectangle from here all the way here. All right. Apply the equal constraint and apply a dimension to it. Here to here, that will be 36 by 36. But upon doing this sketch, you notice that the sketch is actually outside of the solid body. Okay, so if we are to do the extrusion, uh, the extrusion of 60 mm, there will be an excess material at bottom here. All right, so let's think about it a little bit. If we extrude, we might face some issues, but as what we have learned just now, we can actually redefine the planes after that. Correct? So let's just move along. Just accept this sketch as what it is. Finish the sketch. We just need to return, click on this end of part, return one step before the sketch number three. Okay. We will now create an offset plane of 60 mm ahead of it. After that, we can redefine that sketch number three to the newly created work plane. All right, so let me show you. Click on plane, left click, hold on to it, and drag it to the right. Notice the negative sign, so take note you must include the negative 60 mm and enter. With that, we have created this plane here. Now drag the end of part downwards to show the sketch number three. We will now redefine this sketch three. So right mouse click on sketch three, select redefine, and select the newly created work plane three. If you notice, now the work plane gets moved to the, uh, gets transferred from work plane two to work plane three. And with that, we can actually now perform extrude to the next surface, all right? So we don't have any problem of excess solid body at the bottom of the base here. So click extrude, and we we'll just click to next, and press OK. All right. So we have somewhat created a shape. With that completed, we can actually hide some of the planes. So go over the border of the work plane number three, left click, right mouse click, and select visibility. Okay, uh, just hide what you don't need so that you don't get too confused over the whole shape of your model. All right, we have somewhat completed the main feature here. Okay, so next, let's create this diameter 36 and it's actually concentric to the diameter 120. So click on hold. Let's, let me move this dialog box away. Select the position of the hole will be this starting plane and select a circular reference point here to make it concentric to that feature. And this time, the hole will be a simple hole with the diameter of 36. And it goes through, through all and press OK. We also have a hole here of diameter 20. It's actually right in the middle of this fellow here. 
and it goes through all the way into this diameter 36. So let's do, click on this surface, create a new sketch. You notice that the origin point has been projected to you. So we will use that point as a reference, but to just to be certain, just draw a circular feature, a circle using this center point and click on dimensions, enter 20, to, the purpose of this is just to ensure that you are having equal space to ensure that the point here is actually the correct point that we are, we are using. Because sometimes when we are too engrossed into modeling, we might have uh, used a wrong plane or wrong dimensions here and there. So using this method, you can ensure that, okay, we have enough holes for fitting, uh, fitting the four diameter six holes here. So this point is actually good to go. You press finish, click on hole, select this center as your starting point, change the diameter to 20, and we will state now, click on two and select the surface here. And we select that surface, we can press OK. Sometimes, you might have accidentally changed the whole to the, the, the whole termination to true all. So just ensure that you have selected a correct feature here. Make sure there's no cutoff over here. All right, so we have somewhat completed this portion. Let's create the radius. Let me zoom in a little bit on the drawing. So we have a radius of R6 throughout. And at the same time, if we, we, we trace back this radius, it goes to the center of the diameter six holes. So with that, actually, we can create a fillet. Okay. Once we have done the fillet, we can click on this surface, project all these edges to find the points for the diameter six hole creation. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. Click on fillet, change the value to R6, enter, and select these edges one, two, three, and four. Okay. As usual, I do not need to. Uh, rotate the view, you just have to hover over and see the preview of the edges there. Press OK. Now click on this surface, create a sketch. Next, we can project geometry and select this whole geometry, the whole face of it. With that, these four points will be projected along with it because the R6 revealed here also have a center point. Finish your sketch, click on hole, select the four holes here, one, two, three, four, and we will use it as a simple hole. There's no seating. The diameter is six. The depth is actually 10. Okay. In this case, since it's a blind simple hole, ensure that there is a pointed drill point. Press OK. Now let's create. No, oh, let me zoom in now. Zoom out slightly. Let's create this six by diameter twelve holes. Okay. So from here, let's let me change the view to the top view. You notice that this feature over here is actually aligned with this diameter twelve. So that will be your clue. So click on this surface and create a new sketch there. The PCD of this uh, diameter 12 holes are actually diameter 96. Okay, so we create circle, click on this center, and then do a rough sketch first of the circle. Click on dimensions and enter there 96. 
as this is a reference circle, uh, just to create the whole feature, you can actually click on it and change it to a construction line. All right. Next, we need to project this horizontal plane. And lastly, we will create a single point here. The reason is simple. We will create a single point. Then we will apply the whole function of diameter 12 through all. And lastly, we will do a polar array or a circular pattern of the diameter 12 hole. So click on finish sketch, select hole, change it to true all, and change the diameter to diameter 12. Press OK. Let's just study the model first, make sure that everything is correct. And once we can ensure that, we can apply the circular pattern, select the hole as a feature. Now click on rotation axis and select the circular reference here. The instances is six and around about 360 degrees. So that's about it. Press OK. And we have done the mounting holes for this space. Lastly, we need to create the shape here. Okay, there is actually a little cutout, a little recess throughout this uh, square shape. Okay, and let's study it carefully. It's actually from the center axis, it's 22. And then the width of this recess is actually two. And the depth of the recess is, uh, sorry, the width is four, the depth is actually two mm. Okay, there's a few methods to do so. Uh, you can use sweep about the parameter here, or you can just draw the shape and then extrude cut it from the top. But before we do even that, let's analyze it a little bit more. Now, the outermost radius is actually R12 here. And if you look carefully, the inner radius, they are getting smaller and smaller. And we can safely say if we gauge it nicely, it's actually uniformly offset across these items here. All right. So with that, we can actually use the offset tool in your sketching. So before we even begin anything, let me just scroll it sideways. Let's apply the R12 radius around this body. So press fillet, change the radius value to 12, and click here, here, okay. Rotate slightly, just using the preview, each selection, then we select the lines here and here. Now rotate and press OK. Once we are happy with it, we can start by clicking on this top plane, select create new sketch. We will now use project geometry to project this here throughout. Okay, the whole parameter of it. And lastly, we will use the offset. Click on offset, select here, and then click once more to offset by 4mm. Okay, you've noticed there's a lot of geometric constraint being shown. Just press the F9 key to hide it. So as shown here, the width of this recess is actually 12. That's why I, in the first time when I offset, I didn't add any value. I just uh, estimate where it's supposed to be. But the second offset, I applied a 4mm dimension to it. Okay. You, you can do both ways. You can don't apply any dimension for both offset and then just apply another dimension after that. Okay, it's still the same. So click on dimension, click here and here, and we enter 22. Everything is fully constrained. If you notice, they are offset nicely. And now click finish sketch, apply extrude, select this center portion here, the center profile. 
at the recess. We will now extrude by 2 mm distance and apply a cut boolean to it and press OK. We seems that we have a problem here. The direction is actually incorrect. We are actually cutting on a body that's, that is non existent. So just change the direction, flip it aside, and press OK again. Now let's hide all the created planes by selecting it and right click off the visibility. Okay, we have multiple more. So just go over the border, right mouse click, and click on visibility to switch it off. Redo again the same thing. Right mouse click on the axis to off the visibility. With that, let's study our model to ensure that everything is correctly done. Let's just rotate, make sure there's no unnecessary feature being added or removed. All right, I guess that's it. We have successfully created part model A. Happy trying.